Welcome into Golden State Warriors today right here on Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of Dub Nation had a great weekend and your weeks are also off to a fabulous start. Coming up on today's show, going to take a look at three buyout candidates who the Warriors could sign. But first, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Most importantly, though, make sure you turn on your notifications and turn that setting to all. Therefore, if we ever go live, whenever we push out a video, you will be notified like getting a push notification on your phone or on your laptop. Look, this is an easy way for you to stay in the know with all things Warriors. So lock us in, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Let's start to take a look at these three buyout candidates here and the Warriors. Good win against the Minnesota Timberwolves on Sunday. Great performance from Klay Thompson before that in another really impressive performance for him as he continues to round into form. He was going off and... When you get Steph Curry back, that's when we're waiting for this basketball team to round into form. The big question with this basketball team, their depth. And some of that depth, some concerns there at that backup point guard spot. And Alfred Payton is available. Could the Warriors look to sign him on the buyout market? The former lottery pick has certainly had a Jekyll and Hyde NBA career that's more been down than up. But as a number two, number three point guard, he's really just a facilitator. Here's what MSN had to say about the Warriors signing. Alfred Payton never looked up to his potential as a lottery pick, but he's played meaningful minutes in this league. He could be a steady contributor for any contending team's second unit. Payton, a solid backcourt defender and an outstanding rebounder for his position. The Warriors have enough shooting around him, and they were interested in Patrick Beverly, so he definitely fits this mold. And that last line about the Warriors' interest in Patrick Beverly. According to reports out there, it was between the Chicago Bulls, his hometown team for Beverly, and the Golden State Warriors. With the Warriors, obviously, better chance to chase an NBA championship, but Beverly goes to the Bulls, and he's actually played pretty well, and that team has as well in a couple of games since he hopped on board. Alfred Payton's numbers throughout his career, not bad. I thought that when he was backing up Chris Paul a couple of years ago, he was solid, not special by any means. He can run the floor like a floor general, can't shoot for a lick. 10 points per game, nine, uh, four rebounds, excuse me. A little less than six assists throughout his NBA career, which has included 500 games. Field goal percentage sub 45, but you're not asking him to oftentimes put the biscuit in the basket. So what do you think? Should the Warriors sign Alfred Payton? Take some time. Let us know. Think about it. Down in the comment section, S for sign, P for pass. Buyout candidate number two, Stanley Johnson. He, like Alfred Payton, hasn't really lived up to lofty expectations that he had when he was coming into the league or when he was a collegiate or high school basketball player. But he is a pretty good defender, has a lot of length. And is Stanley Johnson the answer to the defensive woes that we've seen for the Golden State Warriors? I don't think so. I think that in the front court, they have some depth issues in terms of their defense behind Kavon Looney. At the wing spots, they have to get it together at some point, right? Back to MSM with their reasoning behind this. On that same note, Steve Kerr's coaching staff could target someone who could help them get more stops in the wings. Considering that, shouldn't rule out Stanley Johnson as a candidate for the dubs like Peyton. Johnson never tapped into his potential, as I said, but he's far from a scrub. While not much of an offensive factor, length, lateral quickness, and physical tools, that's what he has to be a solid defensive contributor. And he certainly has that. A big reason why... You know, his NBA career has been what it is and what it's been is because offensively he's never developed. Defensively, though, as a guy who does have that length, he can come up with some stops, deflect some passes, get his hand in some passing lanes, force some turnovers, and those turnovers can lead to some of those momentum-changing, back-breaking buckets and threes from this Warriors team to get the chase scene or Liddy. His NBA career... Uh, excuse me, stats this year in 30 games played with San Antonio, sub six points per game, just north of three rebounds, 53% from the field, 45% from three and limited opportunities on both ends of the floor. So we've talked about two players so far. Do you want to sign one of those players or would you rather Bob Myers sign somebody else? Drop us a name down in the comment section. And as you go down there, if you take a look at the description, you'll see this link here, chatsports.com slash dubs deal. 
Great deal on a lot of Warriors merchandise. This split hoodie from the We Believe Warriors, so, so fresh. Champion shirt from last year. That's also available using that link down below. If you're a hat guy, then you can rock this hat. You have the Warriors logo on the front with the Bay logo right on the side. A lot of other different items as well. Just make sure you use that link so that Fanatics knows that Chat Sports sent you. Unlike Alfred Payton and Stanley Johnson, John Wall actually did live up to lofty expectations. When he came into the league out of Kentucky, drafted number one overall by the Washington Wizards. And for John Wall, for a long time there, dynamic guard. I'd say him and Russell Westbrook, very, very similar, where they were athletic specimen who could get up and down the floor in a really impressive fashion. And they made some plays with lightning quickness that we hadn't really seen much, right? But then the game kind of passed them both by for John Wall and Russell Westbrook because they never evolved their games. They didn't really have a good feel for the game either. Failed to have long-standing playoff success, and they can't shoot the rock. But for John Wall, can he help up the pace for this Warriors team a little bit and help them when they're going up against athletic lineups because they are a little bit older and sometimes they need that point guard to push the pace. MSN on Wall, the former number one pick. Steph Curry has struggled to stay healthy throughout the year, and that's where John Wall could come in handy. He's no longer the all-star point guard he once was, but he's still got some left in the tank. Even when Curry returns, Wall could be a solid catalyst for their second unit, leading the way alongside Jordan Poole and Kerr's full motion offense. It's the ultimate low-risk, high-reward pickup for them. It's not like he was atrocious against the Clippers. I have no idea what that Clippers organization was thinking going from John Wall to Russell Westbrook for me. Very, very similar players. Russ may be a little bit more spunk in his legs than John Wall now. His last four years, it's really gone downhill pretty quickly. In two of those seasons, he hasn't played. And that's a big reason why it zapped him with some of that athleticism. But him being a catalyst in that second unit, I actually like that more than what I like from those other two options in Stanley Johnson, Alfred Payton. 2020-2021 on a bad team, only 40 games played too. Almost 21 points per game for John Wall. And then last year sat out, could come to a contract buyout with Houston and this year with the Clippers. Wasn't asked to really do a lot offensively alongside Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, but only 11 points per game, five rebounds, and shot a very, very brisk less than 41% from the floor. So pick a player to sign. Last question for you. EP for Alfred Payton, SJ for Stanley Johnson, JW for John Wall. You can play the role of Bob Myers down in the comment section and make sure you subscribe when you venture down there. It's youtube.com slash at Warriors TV for the best Warriors coverage all throughout the year.